I'm the co-founder of Retraction Watch and also the, the executive director, co-founder of the Center for Scientific and Integrity, which is our parent nonprofit, 501c3, all of that stuff. Um, it's a delight to be here. Uh, I'm a journalist. That's really what I do. Um, I play a sort of scientific integrity person on TV or radio or however it will, it will have me. Um, it's been really nice already to hear uh, a bit of the sort of travails that we're in the midst of going through. Um, I think particularly from Heather just now, uh, it sounded all too familiar, the sort of um, lowering. We've actually, Adam and I have cut our salaries to zero. Um, uh, our staff, so that our staff can get paid, I should say. Um, but the, all that stuff. And uh, Chuck, thank you for raising that club thing, because I'm going to come back with club, but I, I, I think that language, maybe it's because I'm a journalist, is really critical here. So I'm going to tell you what I hope is a very quick story. I'm not going to talk about Retraction Watch, which is our blog, which has been doing just over eight years now. Um, if you don't know about Retraction Watch, obviously go to retractionwatch.com. But if you don't know about Retraction Watch in this room, we have not been doing a very good job of getting out there. Um, what I'm going to talk about, however, is our database, which is currently technically in beta, uh, but is quite ready, uh, quite soon going to be launched. And I want to tell you the story of the problem we're trying to solve, or one of the problems we're trying to solve, and then try and explain a little bit about how we hope to solve it. So one of the issues that happens and I think you're all familiar with this, but it's sometimes important to put some data behind things. It's actually always important to put the data behind things and journalists, we don't always. Um, but, and this is a just, I, I'm, I'm picking a couple of examples of papers that have demonstrated this phenomenon, but here's the problem, is that papers that are retracted continue to be cited as if they were never retracted. You want to cite a retracted paper, go for it. It's got a DOI, it's got this, it's got that. You may have a very valid reason. Maybe it's to say this has been retracted. Um, that's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is more than 90% of the time when they look, when these researchers, by the way, this was a replication of earlier work that they had done in 1999, so it's very consistent. Again, more than 90% of the time, the, the citations don't acknowledge the retraction. That's sort of bananas, quite frankly. Um, again, here's just another more recent uh, paper that came out, and I could give you many more references if you'd like. I don't want to bore you or take more time. But again, here's another paper that came out just, uh, I mean, obviously, no time travel. This was online first in June, not September. Uh, the major findings, citation counts and mentally reader counts continue to grow after attraction. Again, those citations are positive citations. They are not negative citations. Okay? This is a problem. It's only one of the problems you're trying to solve. But now, you know, with all due respect to any publishers in the room, uh, or frankly, anyone who's sort of involved in this flow, you're all terrible at this. And, <laughs> you know, it, and I, you can stand and tell me all the things we're terrible at, and trust me, it's a really long list. Um, but this is the thing that we want to not be terrible at, and we hope we aren't being, and I'm going to show you how we're not being. Again, there's just one paper. This was by uh, a couple of librarians, at University of Minnesota, looking just at the mental health literature. What did they actually find when they looked for, you know, was this paper retracted, which seems like a pretty basic friggin' question to, to ask and answer? Okay, 40% of the time, there really was no way to tell. And again, with all due respect to, and I don't want to pick on Crossref, but since <laughs> we just heard from Chuck, with, and it isn't Crossref's fault. Publishers don't provide this information. Or if they do, it's in a way that I can, I can barely understand. And I'm, if there, again, there's one thing I'm good at, it's understanding retraction. So we're dealing with this, this is a big problem. So I almost don't blame researchers who don't realize something's been retracted because you can't figure it out. So what do we want to do? And, and by the way, just, well, before I get to what we want to do and what we're doing, retractions, I, again, I don't think it's going to be a shock or surprise to anyone the, they're on the rise, uh, quite markedly so, and they're still a rare event and all. I always give that caveat, but, and I, I don't want to take the time, but happy to later explain the little asterisk uh, by 2010. But, you know, that middle figure, as you all know, is, is sort of a rough estimate. At the end of the day, number of attractions has, you know, just gone up and up and up. Um, may plateau, we just don't know. I don't make predictions, but it may or may not plateau. Point is that, and again, even though it's rare, you know, we're creeping toward, you know, a tenth of a percent, and that's still rare, but like what's happening, obviously we're better at finding them. I don't just mean us, I actually mean the scientific community more than us, but they're on the rise. They're a bigger thing to have to think about. That's not gonna go away. 
And so if nobody is actually, you know, curating them properly, and trust me, nobody is, and that includes, again, all the sort of good people, bad people, otherwise people, okay, from PubMed to everybody else, we created a database. This is what our you know, funding has been for, really. Um, and so we have now uh, more than 18,000 retractions in our database. Uh, go to anyone else, you will not find that many retractions. I think right now, uh, Scopus is doing best in their sort of south of 11,000. Um, this is a hand curated database, right? This isn't sort of, oh, just give us a bunch of APIs and we'll pipe it into our database. Because what what's the, if the story I just told you resonates at all, it's that that would be effing useless. So we have done this by hand, 18,000 attractions by hand. Um, this, you can go there right now. We say it doesn't show up on this screenshot, but it's, it's in beta for the moment. Um, but it's all there. Go search it. Search for your favorite or least favorite author, your favorite or least favorite journal, whatever you'd like. We've got all the metadata in there, retractiondatabase.org. So what's on our roadmap? What are we doing next to close this store? And again, we, what do we want to do? We would love for this, and we've always wanted for this, to be piped into any way that anybody, you know, somebody looks at a paper, they should sort of be alerted, whether they're realizing it or not, that that paper's been retracted. And this is going to be the best source of that. We're not the best source of anything else. Like if I ever stand up here and tell you that we're the best source of, well, anything else, tell me to sit down, okay? This we are, and I'm, I'm not even, I'm not going to apologize for saying that. And so we want that to pipe in. What do we need? We need two things. One is, I mentioned at the beginning, I'm a journalist, okay? You can decide whether I'm a good or a bad one, but that's my core sort of identity and what I do. I don't know a damn thing about actually producing. I mean, we had to hire someone just to produce this thing, which is just not the most, I mean, I know COS, you were, I think he was talking about, you know, some issues with, with UX, like, we're 20,000 light years or years, or years behind that. Um, it's terrible UX, fine, but the data's there. That's what we spent all our time and resources doing and that's, that had to be the priority given our funding. So we want, we need an API, right? Because we need one to actually pipe this into anything. Um, we don't have the capability, knowledge, et cetera, to do that. We'd love to partner with anyone who can help us with it, okay? That being said, we also need to sustain ourselves. We heard, again, we heard from Heather, we're going to hear, I think, even more about the sustainability story. We want this to be open. I, I can't stress that enough. But here's the deal. It requires, as I mentioned, a constant curation, a daily. There are four or five attractions a day that each have to be entered and investigated and all of that so we can understand them. We need to sustain ourselves to be able to continue doing that. And if we suddenly just sort of say everybody can sort of use it, um, well, I'm sorry, that's not a great business model for us at the moment. So. If anybody would like to help us sustain ourselves funding wise and the open model is definitely what we want. Um, let's talk and it sounds like we've got lots of ideas already, whether it's a club model with, with apologies to Chuck again, whatever it is, but this is what, what we've created. We are, we are sure it's already created value because people are using it and because people constantly ask us for the data set, right? Which we can also talk about if you'd like that. So that's, that's where we are and thank you. Thank <laughs> you.